Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where we are wrapping up these four MonsterVerse movies. The, the classics. The, uh, yeah. The some, new classic? Some of them, I think, definitely fall into that category. I think this one does. Because people are... All right. Yeah, come on, mate. You know, all right. I will listen. I, I mean, a... it's not that old. No, you know? that's true, yes. Time leave will a tell, li- I guess. Uh, leave a like. Leave yeah. a like. <laughs> that never gets old. Leaving a like, mm. I think. Uh, I don't I, 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 I like it. I enjoyed this one a lot. Yeah, I wonder how, you know, I wonder how it'll stand the test of time. Mm. But uh, you know what? This one was fun and brisk. Oh, God. It's the briskest one yet. I, is it the shortest one? It is the shortest one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. They've learned some lessons here. Absolutely, they have. Because there's some human drama in it. You know, the human drama, blah. But it's pretty light on, yeah. isn't it? Because the last ones all had dead dads, and oh, oh. I'm sad. And I was, mom, what happened to your dad? He got smashed by Godzilla. Well, mine did as well. My <laughs> mum, my mum was an eco terrorist, and so now she's dead or whatever. Did she also get smashed by Godzilla? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Who are these characters? Is this Millie Bobby Brown? Is this Millie Bobby Brown's real accent? Yeah, my mum got smashed by a Godzilla. But this one, you know, everybody's over it. Yeah. You know, Millie Bobby Brown and uh, Kyle Chandler, they've gotten over it. They don't care. Now it's just like, where's my daughter? Mm. What's what's oh she's in Hong Kong. Oh, she went to the center of the earth in an elevator or something. All right. <laughs> All right, that's fine. I'm used to it now. I'm bloody used to it now. But in this one, there's human drama, but there's, you know, there's the little kid and, and she yep. she uh, lives with Godzilla on Skull Island and mm-hmm. he trusts her and etc. And that's fine, you know. Yeah. It's pretty light. On. But this, it's Godzilla versus Kong, and that's what we're headed towards. It, right. A couple of freight trains headed towards each other, and that's what we want, and that's what we get. A couple of big boys coming in hot. That's right. <laughs> uh, so Kong's all grown up. There yep. was some concern going into this. Isn't he like a third of the size of Godzilla? Mm. No, that we'll talk about sizes later. Mm. But he's living in a Truman Show reality. They're just PNGs, so you can just scale them up <laughs> or down as you want, and then you rotate them, and then you put them on a ship. And then you have them hit each other. Punch. So it's fine, yeah. It's easy to do that in the, in the age it's of computers. It's so easy. It's so easy. Mm. So, cracking cast yet again. Uh, we've got, obviously, returning characters. But in terms of new, we've got Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, Lance Reddick is sort of in this. He sure is, yep. <laughs> it, the kid from Hunt for the Wilder People. He's Slash in Slash Deadpool 2, he's Absolutely, in this. Absolutely, yeah. He has a name. He does. It's the kid from the Wilder People. Correct. Anyways, story this time around. Godzilla's gone bloody Burko, right? Mm, yeah. He's mm-hmm. stomping around the world, uh, which, by the way, he's turned into a weird MCU hologram flying ship Let's situation. talk about that later, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. we can go yeah, back yeah, to that. Yeah. Uh, because somebody's messing around uh, trying to make a big mecha Godzilla, and Godzilla's like, I don't understand this and I don't like it. Do you think it's the maybe the monster Victrola from the previous movie? Oh, it might just be. It's not. Oh, God. It's something else. <laughs> I think they really go out of their way, even design-wise, to make this Godzilla. He's really mean. Like yeah. He's just very upset. Because you want you want the audience to think that he's gone rogue, you know? Yeah, exactly. He's become a real bad boy. And there's a lot of bad boy stuff in this. They thought, give him a big leather jacket. <laughs> they tried that. <laughs> give him a big motorcycle, you know? But they couldn't scale the PNGs oh, correctly. They so uh, you got to give him a mean look. Yeah, that's fair enough. King Kong as well. You know, yes. as you mentioned, they scaled him up. He's got a beard. He's got a beard. <laughs> he's also, you know, he's on house arrest in mm-hmm. uh, on Skull Island. They've put him in a little... Again, the Truman MCU, Show. Truman Show hologram, MCU hologram room. Yep. Uh, he's mad about it. Mm-hmm. But of course, if they let him out for even a moment, Godzilla going to get him. Because yeah. there can't be two alphas, no. they tell us. That's right. Till the end when it's, it seems like it's fine. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It is fine. So what if the two alphas can't coexist? One of them will just kill the other one and then it's fine. Yeah. And then they'll protect the world from what else. Exactly. It's fine. If I was Kong, I'd just keep running. You just stay on the other side of the earth. You yeah. just keep moving. It's a good idea. Just keep moving. The first encounter they have on the battleships. Tremendous. Love that. Yeah. All off kilter. Kong just fucking comes in throwing hands. Yeah, he right. can punch Mason. I was going to say, maybe if they've locked him up in a little arena... Maybe get somebody to teach him Krav Maga or something. Because <laughs> yeah. unlike Godzilla, he's he's got he's got moves. He's a tool user. Yeah. You know, give him like one of those big nightsticks. Oh yeah. You know? God, I would love that. Like a security guard, like a nighttime security guard. You want to John Wick him? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh my God. But there's the moment where Godzilla atomic blasts through the ship. Ah, oh, incredible. Like that's all terrific. Kong nearly drowns. He comes up. He vomits. He's just <laughs> like, whoa, God. <laughs> I hated this! And then you just see Godzilla at the distance just looking really sinister like, I fucking dare you to get up. Yeah. And he doesn't. He's like, yeah. I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah. Do you think they mo-capped like just a couple of drunk guys having a fight in a car park? <laughs> do you think that might have been it? Almost certainly. Now, we talked about human characters, Mason. Mm-hmm. 
I don't love all the conspiracy theory running around situation, okay. right? But I know you have thoughts about podcasts. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Yep. That, well, well, first of all, it's a little weird that Brian Tyree Henry's character has a podcast where he explicitly says that he's going to break into his workplace <laughs> and steal some secrets. No but, voice modulator. It's just yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, just I think just just probably admits who he is. Yep. But also the fact that he's done 246 episodes where he's. Like identified himself, and he and he and he claims he's he's going to do that, mm. and nobody like calls the cops on him or anything, or, or human resources gets involved, would suggest to me that he doesn't have the reach. Yeah, you know, okay, it's like, a real hobbyist situation mm, here, you know. Unlike the Weekly Planet podcast, I was going to say, and you know what? Also, it seems like it's just sort of like random ranting. Why doesn't he have some segments mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. the Weekly Planet podcast? Why, okay. does, why doesn't he do news of the week? Yes, then he could discuss a topic, maybe. Titans, giant monsters, and so forth. Sure, yeah. Then maybe he could do what we're reading, what we're going to read. <laughs> Just things that he's been reading and probably his conspiracy life. theories okay, sure, about yeah. monsters. Yep. And then he can have letters. Yeah. You engage the audience. They, they, yep. you know, they send some stuff in. You read some reviews at the end. That's right. That'd yeah. be incredible. Five stars. We'll read it out <laughs> on the podcast. He could even. Uh, I mean, we don't do this. It's unrelated. But we could. Uh, he could. He maybe gets do some interviews. He yeah. could interview the Muto. Oh my from god. The first movie. Ah. You know? How do you feel about being beaten up by Godzilla that time? <laughs> I didn't like ah! it. I hated it. <laughs> Rebecca Hall's character, I love her, uh, mm-hmm. but the, there's a magazine cover uh, where she's called the Kong Whisperer, and mm. I think that's not a great... No? Because he couldn't hear you. He'd be like, I can go. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if look, if I were in charge of naming, yeah. maybe Jane Greatall. Oh, that's good. Right? Yeah. Jane very good all. <laughs> sure. Because she's, she's talking to a bigger... Absolutely. Talking to it's, a bigger monkey. It's way harder, probably. Probably harder. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to talk about this universe, right? Because it's really expanded. It's holograms. It's floating ships. The hollow earth has never been hollower. Oh, my God. It's so my hollow. My goodness. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's got its own sun in the middle or something? I think. Or a, or a, a giant glowing... Blue, the the gods. It's filled. The Earth's filled with Godzilla energy. Basically. Yeah, man. Yeah, you absolutely know it. I th- you know what? In, in rewatching this, I kind of feel like this movie franchise has had the same trajectory as you mentioned earlier, the John yeah. Wick franchise. Oh, I think you're gonna say the MCU because it starts off like I'm a man who built a metal suit, mm-hmm. and now it's like I went into space and I and I reignited the sun or whatever happened in the sure. Marvels. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta jump on these trends, you know. Yeah. But I kind of feel like there is a there is a massive jump, mm. especially for. Mm, I mean, the last one had the big flying wing ship and it had the hollow earth and etc. But it's it was not the same. No, it's not the same, is the, it? The propulsion system is significantly different. Oh Mason. my god, they just have anti gravity engines all of a sudden. Oh, and there's a Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> there is a Mecha Godzilla. Well, I mean, when the the trailer for this movie dropped initially, yeah. I had a lot of thoughts about. It was a little sneak preview of Mecha Godzilla in it, and I'm like. Well, this universe doesn't have the technology to build a Mecha Godzilla. Mm. Maybe it's a you know a, a one of the other Titans, and they've they've armor plated it, and they put a chip in its brain or whatever. Or maybe akin to the uh, American Godzilla cartoon series. Sure. Maybe the original Godzilla dies. This is a new Godzilla, and they've they've turned the dead Godzilla into a yeah. into a, into a Mecha Godzilla or and something. That's sort of what's happened. Yeah, because it's King Ghidorah's brain, right? Yeah. And then they've just built a Mecha Godzilla. And then they were like, "Why did this go bad?" <laughs> it's a Megatron Galvatron situation. It is, isn't it? Remember Galvatron? My goodness, yeah. Bad movie upsetting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, like John Wick, mm. you've just got to lean into it, I guess. Yeah, and I absolutely. thought it was a lot of fun. How do you feel about the design of Mecha Godzilla? Yeah, I mean, it's not the traditional look, you know. Mm. It's, it strays yeah. pretty far, but, you know, whatever. It's skinnier. It's definitely skinnier. It's more kind of like bits and pieces that it can... You know what it felt do. like to me? It felt like whenever they put a robot in the Tekken series. Oh, okay. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. All the bits are spinning. Yeah, well, they're all spinning. You yeah. know? It can do a breakdance fight. Yes, spin exactly. Kick. That's right. Like Eddie What's His Name or whatever. Yeah, like Eddie What's His Name. Exactly. Yeah. Classic Tekken character, Eddie What's His Name. <laughs> I like the design and I feel like it, but I don't love it, but I, I felt it was like, like it's suitably textured and, it, yeah. you know, but it never really, unlike Kong and Godzilla, it never really felt like it was there. Mm. I okay. think there is a problem with this movie in terms of Godzilla is that the speed is it's too much. And they've done that on purpose because if you go back to like the 2014, it's very slow and methodical and mm. takes a while to wind up. And when he falls, he falls slowly. Whereas this, he like scutters and jumps and like mm. he's quite quick. And the Benny Hill theme and is the playing the whole yeah. time. <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't have the rights to that. You're just going to have to imagine. That's it. right, yeah. And that's intentional because he's kind of more ferocious and angry in this mm. one. But I yeah. think that does take away from kind of like the scale of, of all of it. Like you can give those kind of maneuvers to Kong because he's like a primate. You know, sure, but sure, sure. It's, it's different for a robot or a Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla does have that. He's got the jetpack. He does have a jetpack, yeah. I'll tell you what, though. Um, I really appreciate that Adam Wingard, who directed this, by design, there was a definitive winner. Like, Godzilla defeats Kong, right? Like, uh-huh. definitively. Uh-huh, sure. And then, you know, they team up to, um, to take down. They punch for a bit, and then they're mates. Well, speaking of, mm-hmm. and look, I'd hate to jump in and do this theory myself, because oh, I feel no. like I wouldn't do it justice. But Ben, who edits these videos with Lawrence, he thinks narratively this movie mm-hmm. should have been what Batman v Superman was. That's a great point. They fight on a big battleship, etc. Sure, absolutely. No, no, but just like the look. If he wants to explain it, he can do it here. This is just Batman v Superman. Think about it. This is everything people were hoping to get from Batman v Superman. While DC struggled to get their universe off the ground with consistency and speed, the MonsterVerse comes in and says, "Well, okay, we'll do it." Kong is Batman. Godzilla is Superman. Think about it. Batman and Superman fighting has always been a favorite idea for the world. Who would win? Brawn or brains? Power or tech? They exist on opposite ends of the superpower spectrum with totally different vibes, yet are both the most popular heroes in their entire pantheon. But what's important about a versus story is that you have to have more than one fight between them. You can't just spend two hours building up to a single punch up. The entire point of the movie is to get your two big guys into an arena and see how they would fight. The old adage is Batman can beat anyone with preparation. The classic way to do this with Batman and Superman, probably the most effective way to do it, is to first have Superman handily beat Batman. Batman throws out all of his gadgets and nothing works because it's fucking Superman. And then Batman does his research, figures out how Superman works, and then uses his action actual superpower, preparation. Now! Superman comes in with all the confidence of his previous victory and then loses because it's fucking Batman. But fight movies are also sports movies. Sports isn't interesting because one game is super exciting. It's the storyline surrounding the big game. How well has this athlete been doing this season? Who's their biggest rival? What are their strengths and weaknesses and how are they gonna counter their enemy? This is what Godzilla vs Kong fucking nails. We get three fights in the movie, three rounds of back and forth. Godzilla beats Kong on his home turf of water. Then Kong uses a magic rock he found to annihilate Godzilla and then Godzilla goes toe to toe on the ground with no weapons and kills him with his claws. That's how you properly portray a fight to the death. The magic rock is everything. That is kryptonite. You can still have kryptonite in your story and then have Superman find a way around it. And then you can still have your team up at the end. A bigger evil rises from a facility ready to destroy Superman unless he gets help from his rival. Batman doesn't do shit in the doomsday fight. The camera pans towards the big three ready to face doomsday and the very first thing Batman does is hide. He then spends the entire third act running away, leading doomsday on a wild goose chase so that Superman can actually kill him. Kong and Godzilla actually team up here. Godzilla has proven himself to be stronger physically, but Kong's ability to use weapons edges him up just to the same power level. Together they can take on Doomsday. And in the end, Godzilla uses his own previous weakness, the axe, against Mecha Godzilla, powering up Kong so he can finish the job. It's already been talked to death how Superman carrying the kryptonite spear is the dumbest plan out of all the readily available options that they have. Just based off the mechanics and the plot, Wonder Woman clearly should have been the one to do it, but can you imagine how cool it would have been if Batman stabbed Doomsday, the mortal actually saving Moby Dick's life, and then using the weapon intended to kill a god to save the world instead? Godzilla vs. Kong just does the same plot of Batman v Superman, but it just makes more sense. Superman wins, Batman wins, and then Superman definitively wins. Godzilla is just better than Kong, so when Kong is the one to ultimately save the day, we feel really good. What's great about Superman beating Batman in the end is it validates both of them. Batman is brave and strong enough to fight the strongest being in the universe, and crafty enough to actually be a genuine help to him when they work together. Batman v Superman had completely different goals from this movie, but Godzilla vs Kong executes the idea with such clarity and consistent character motivation with satisfying world and power mechanics. MonsterVerse copied Marvel in a way DC refused to do. First make a movie with your main character, then do another movie with your other central character, then do a sequel with that main hero, and then do your team-up crossover. The groundwork here has been laid, so it's satisfying. And no Nobody's talking about it. The MonsterVerse did the MCU. They made a cinematic universe and it worked. <sighs> okay, back to editing. But yeah, the Mecha Godzilla fight is good. You know, it's mm. fun. They team up and they, you know, they just tear him to pieces and Kong's got his big axe and that's cool. That's right. That's cool, man. Mm. At the end of the movie, he, he puts it up on the wall of his man cave. Yeah, in the does, hollow doesn't of he? It. My man cave, my rules. <laughs> I'm a gorilla. <laughs> no chicks allowed. <laughs> <laughs> actually, so maybe lo- Mothra. I mean, he, he would love chicks, actually, yeah. for real. Yeah, he's very, he's very alone. Yeah, <laughs> but look, I'm just gonna say it. 
I think Godzilla in this universe is a big loser. Whoa. Like, he's always comes out as the alpha and everybody respects him and whatever. But if you look at these films, he only ever wins on the assist, right? In 2014, Aaron Taylor Johnson did something. I can't remember what. Lured something away with a nuclear something. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I don't remember, okay. right? But he fell down quite a lot. In King of the Monsters, uh -huh. Ken Watanabe powers him up with a nuclear explosion by travelling to the centre of the Earth. Yeah, yeah. And then Mothra powers him up a second time, That's right? That's true. Kong it Skull Island doesn't even make an appearance. <laughs> Coward. Weak. Mm. And in this one, so Tarzan restarts King Kong's heart. Which, by the way... Godzilla did that. Like, Godzilla stopped King Kong's heart. That's true. And that's what had him seize the victory. Yeah, okay. He's not an apex predator. He's <laughs> lucky. And he has mates sometimes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Mason. Yes. How big is it? It's this segment of the show. I love that. I love this yeah. segment. So in this movie, Godzilla stands at 400 feet or 121.9 meters, which is up on the 393 feet or 120 meters from the previous movie, probably. And Kong stands at 336 feet or 102 meters, which is up on the 104 feet or 32 meters from the last movie. So he's literally 70 meters taller. Huh. And he's got that beard. Sure does. And that's cool. That is cool, yeah. yeah. Anyways, you know what it's time for? What's it time for? It's time for Godzilla vs. Trivia, the trivia section of the show we do every week. So this film marks the 59... Nah, oh, fuck it, that one's boring. I won't do that one. <laughs> Okay, but leave that in for Yeah, that. I'll leave this <laughs> in though. Yeah. The reason Godzilla ignored Kong and his parents when they were on Skull Island, because apparently they were essentially in exile after losing the war against all the uh, Godzillas. So they were just like, you stay there and I'll stay everywhere else in the world. Okay, we'll sure. We'll call it even Steven Seagal. This version of Godzilla is also partially modelled after a crocodile and tends to act like one as he is more sinister. He does kind of, he's got that one expression I feel in this. He doesn't mm. have a lot of variety in his art. Uh, Emotive. You're a real Godzilla hater. Maybe I am. Seems that way, yeah. It's to be better. He's always getting powered up. How about power down to your death, bitch? Wow. All right. Adam Wingard originally wanted James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, Whoa. to be a background extra, but Rolfe immediately turned it down because he had the birth of his second child. Man, get your priorities right. I agree. <laughs> be like one of those YouTubers that, that isn't there for the birth that of your child. That hates their family. Yeah, yeah, because they've got to make content. What are it's, you doing? Exactly. But Wingard also credits Rolfe's Godzilla-thon web series, which got his interest up. Oh, in there, there you go, yeah. So that's fun. James Rolfe, angry video game nerd. Yeah. One of the good ones. One of the good ones? I think so. For now. Oh. <laughs> if that changes... Just know we don't endorse anything, ever. Yeah. Adam Wingard explained why the movie's runtime is a little less than two hours. He the camera ran out of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows how to fix it. He stated that this is on purpose, telling Variety that it prefers to keep films under two hours. Yeah, certainly well, it was one on, on purpose, that's for sure. Yeah. Tell you that much. Certainly wasn't the camera run out of batteries. <laughs> you know when I was screaming about batteries and now the camera ran out of mm. batteries? That was a joke. I actually meant we had too many batteries. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't film because there were batteries in front of the lens. <laughs> he said that if this movie ran for three hours, it wouldn't likely include any additional Titans duking it out. So it'd be people in boardrooms being Ugh. like, what are we doing? Got family stuff. What are we doing and how do we do it? Oh, so stop my toe. Come rescue me, Dad. Mm. Shut up. Now, remember we talked about, like, what happened to Alan Jora? It was, like, in the end of the last movie. What? <laughs> He was like, I'm coming back for a sequel. Oh, um... <laughs> Just Dance. Just Dance. <laughs> I was his character's name? I wanted to see if you knew. No. Because I certainly I could have figured it out eventually. Yes, yes, yes. I would have gone, is that Millie Bobby Brown's character? Probably not. <laughs> she's in this. Yep, yep. Uh, Kyle Chandler's still in this. Mm -hmm. Vera Farmiga's character's probably not named Alan. Probably not, mm. yeah. So there was a scene that was cut which they actually filmed where his forces are killed by Apex cybernetic soldiers when they are stealing Ghidorah's severed head. And again, Charles Dance reprised that role. Oh. And there was also a very good reason, I feel, why there wasn't a post-credits in this movie because director Adam Wingard said, the MonsterVerse is at a crossroads now. It's really at the point where audience have to kind of step forward and vote for more of these things. If this movie is a success, obviously they will continue forward. Was now, it? Yes. So huh. here's the thing. It's funny because on a budget of... Anywhere between 155 and 200 million, who knows? Mm. So probably on the upper end. It made 470 million, which was up on the previous movie. This also had the biggest opening weekend during the pandemic of that oh, year. Yeah, that's right. And it also went to streaming at the same time. So this is like an unparalleled success yeah. despite all of those things. Yeah. So that's I bigger than Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> that's right. And I feel like 
They, That's bigger than one of those Pixar movies they put on Disney Plus and you're like, how long's that been on there? Eight months. <laughs> <laughs> Never even heard of it. Is it good? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, I think they were going to wrap it up. I yeah, think right. they were like, this is done because yeah. it's taken a few years to kind of generate new content for this. It was really like, there's no post credits because like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Do you, do you That's to... never stopped anybody before. No, I know. Put Harry Styles in it. <laughs> That's Harry Styles' monster. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Big success, and it's it's carrying on for now. And we endorse it until we don't. That's right, and then mm-hmm. we never like them. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyways, mm. do you want to hit towards next week? Yes. I'm Tyler Beauregard. I don't care. You think people are going to turn out in droves for Wonka? <laughs> Wonka prequel. I don't know. How Wonka got his groove on. <laughs> How did he get his groove on? I don't know. Is he magic? He's magic. Did he learn magic? Is he, he magic? I don't know. He's a witch. I don't know. Is it a musical? Yes, oh. maybe. <laughs> yes, maybe. Great. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, if you do want to see that early, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co where it's like our private Patreon. There are early videos. There's video game Let's Plays. There's bonus podcasts. We do movie commentaries over there, don't we? That's right. Mm. Also, we have a podcast, as mentioned, you might have heard, called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. It's incredibly successful. Very popular. And we'd love it to stay just this successful, but no more or less successful. That's right. This is enough exposure for us. God. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one in, one out. It's got its own YouTube channel, Spotify, yeah. Apple, all of that if you are interested. So if you're planning on dipping out of the podcast, tell a friend about it. Let someone know. Yeah, yeah. Clock, you can clock out and they can clock in. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much to Ben and Lawrence for editing this series. Thank you, Ben and Lawrence. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. What's your favourite monster? Mine was a spider, but it was also a crab. Wow. And it was in the trees. Mine was um, jealousy. Wow. Yeah. Well, it doesn't become you, Mason, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> Makes you look petty. Mm, and also Rodan, because he was oh, yeah. all on fire and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he did do that too. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, good, yeah. yeah. yeah.